Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of Board and Busters with Lincoln Children's Museum. Today is Tuesday, June 9th, and we are continuing with our extra fun dinosaur theme. Now, so far, we have learned that there are dinosaurs that would eat different things. We've learned about herbivores, carnivores, omnivores. We've learned about their environments when we made that swamp in a couple of dioramas. Now today, we're going to be thinking about, well, why are there no dinosaurs anymore? Well, about 65 million years ago, something happened that caused them to go extinct. And when something is extinct, that means that there are none of them left at all. Though there are no more Tyrannosaurus rex, there are no more Diplodocus, there are no more of any of those dinosaurs. They all died. And if there are no living ones, there can't be new ones. So how did that happen though? Now that is a really good question. And scientists have been working on that idea ever since people discovered the fossils of dinosaur skeletons. What were these creatures? When did they live? Why are there no more of them? So scientists have been able to figure out that it happened 65 million years ago. And they did that by looking at the rocks and the rocks around those last dinosaurs. And they were able to use some pretty cool techniques to learn how old those rocks were. Now, what happened that could have caused that? Some scientists think that there was a really big volcanic eruption. And when a volcano erupts, there's lava, but there's also a lot of ash and smoke that can go up into the atmosphere. And there would have been enough ash and smoke that it would have blocked out the sun for maybe a while and it would have changed the air on the planet. So all of the animals that had evolved and adapted to live on Earth the way it was, they couldn't survive anymore. There are other theories with asteroids hitting the Earth. There's a lot of different little theories, but really what scientists are starting to think now is that maybe it was a little bit of everything because there's evidence for big volcanic eruptions there's evidence for asteroids hitting the earth so maybe one of those things wasn't enough but with everything happening all at once it turned in to be a big enough thing that all of the dinosaurs went extinct now for our printable today Here's Kazoo, and he has recently learned the word extinct. So here's his picture down here with a volcano in the background and the silhouettes of different dinosaur types. Now, here are the pictures of how they looked when they were alive. Can you match up the spot and match it to the correct creature? figure out where they were standing. Now, for our video recommendation today, we have SciShow Kids, and Jesse and Squeaks and Dino will tell you all about what happened to the dinosaurs. And it's important as a scientist to look at and think about all of the different options. What could have happened? And learn about the different options that people have thought of and then think about it yourself and maybe there's even something that scientists have missed so far and maybe you'll grow up to be that scientist that finds a new theory now for our book recommendation today it's a pretty silly one it's called edwina the dinosaur who didn't know she was extinct by mo willems as you can tell from the picture, Edwina here, she's a dinosaur. She's wearing a hat. She's got a necklace on. She's got a little purse 
And you know what? It even looks like she painted her toenails. So this silly dinosaur, she didn't realize she was extinct. It's a fun story. We have it linked for you. And our song recommendation today is Dinosaur Stuff. Now, it's a good one to get your body moving with a fun tune. Now, we have that one linked for you as well. Now, I have a couple of activities for us today, one science and one art. We are going to make our own little volcano. Now, all you need for this version of a volcano, now volcanoes are so fun to do with chemistry. Really, all you need to make a volcano with chemistry is something that's an acid and something that is alkaline. And when they come together, there's a chemical reaction that happens and it makes gas bubbles. So what you need for this version is oil, water, a bottle, you'll want to tray for this one, I promise, and some food coloring, and then for our chemical reaction, we're going to use Alka-Seltzer. Now, Alka-Seltzer, it's a medicine, and it's something that you might take if you have a tummy ache, and it helps to calm down your tummy. Now, if you or anyone in your family has ever used this before, you'll know that when you drop it into a glass of water, then it fizzes. But how does that happen? I thought we needed two different things to make a chemical reaction. Well, inside this tablet, and it's dry powder, there is citric acid and sodium bicarbonate. So we have our acid and our alkaline in this tablet. And all we have to do is get it wet and it will start fizzing. So before I do my actual experiment here, I'd like you to take a closer look and I'm just going to, in my tray here, so you can see what happens, I'm just going to add some water to my Alka-Seltzer tablet here. So you see, all you need is water, and those dry powders will dissolve and start to combine. Now, to make it extra fun, we're going to do it in a bottle. And you'll need to put about, about a fourth of the way of your bottle with water. There we go. It's not exact. And add some food dye if you'd like. I'm gonna add some red because lava is red. So I'm gonna add two drops of red there. And I'm actually also gonna add a drop of yellow. So what happens? Red plus yellow equals orange. I'm gonna swirl that around and now you can see I have orange water now. Now, we're gonna to top off that bottle with the oil. I'm gonna bring it up probably close to the top, not all the way to the top, but pretty close. Now, if you remember from yesterday when we made our ocean bottle, what happens? Oil plus water? Well, the oil floats. And that's because it is not as dense as the water. So it floats on top, just like a floaty in the pool. So there we go. Now, we're going to add in our Alka-Seltzer tablet. I'm going to drop that in and it will start fizzing underneath and it will bring those bubbles up to the surface. Let's see, I'm going to sneak a little bit more water in here. If you fill it all the way to the top, it'll overflow. I wanted to keep it a little less messy this time though. But isn't that neat? The way that when those bubbles come up through the water, it carries the color with it. It almost looks like a little lava lamp. But you can think about it. If something is hot, it rises to the surface. And this is kind of what happens inside of a volcano. All right, now we do have a little craft for you today. And for our craft, you will need some cupcake liners in colors if you have them. If you don't have colors, you 
can use a white one and color it with markers or paint it. And you're going to need some brightly colored paper and a background. You'll also need some scissors and some glue stick. And for adding in details, some markers. If you have googly eyes, you can use googly eyes on this project too. All right, now I think I'm going to make my dinosaur, how about blue? These are very light blue because these are the pastel ones, but that's okay. I think it'll still stand out on here a little bit. Just a little bit. I'll switch to yellow. That looks better on the paper. Now take your paper and fold it in half. I just match up the curve and there is, there it is in half. All right, now I'm gonna cut this in half right on that line where I folded it. And part of this is going to be the body. Now I do want to use, I think, a silver one. I think these are pretty neat to make the spines. Now these ones are made out of aluminum foil, so they may not stick as well as glue stick. I've got my liquid glue here. Now I'm gonna cut, let's see, I need to cut the, I'm gonna make a stegosaurus. Cause this is really lending itself to be a stegosaurus, I think with those bumps in it. And cut this one in half also. And I need to cut some little plates out of it. So just cut around. There's some little spikes or plates for your dino. Let's see. Let's get a few more in here. Those we want it to go pretty much all the way around the top. Let's check. So I think actually that is just about the right number of plates. Cut this one down and trim it so that it sticks better. So there are, those are gonna be the, the spikes on the back of my Stegosaurus. And I do want his legs to, and head and tail to be the same color as his body. So let's see here. We need to make a little head. And you can definitely trace these out if you would like. All right, this will be his head. And we need a couple little feet. So I'm gonna fold it in half because I would like his legs to be the same size as each other. So let's see, and we can just cut kind of a little stump shape. That will work just fine. And a tail. So I'm gonna cut a nice little tail shape there. And now just glue it down. So there are all of our pieces, a head, legs, a body, some spikes, and a tail. I'm gonna start by gluing down the spikes. So again, since this one is foil, I'm gonna use liquid glue. It'll just work a little bit better. All right, there's the glue, and I'm gonna put my little guy right here. All right, now I'm gonna use glue stick for the rest. Here comes his body and this purple will dry clear. I might be able to see it through the paper right now. Yep. <laughs> All right, there is the body. And the tail. we need is his head and you can use your brightly colored paper 
to add details to your page. You can cut and paste. You can also, if you want to, you can use brightly colored paper instead of, instead of little cupcake liners here too. That is also a choice. And I'm going to make his eye turquoise and a little mouth. There we go. Oh, there is your cupcake liner dinosaur. Now, that is all the activities I have for you today. There is a physical activity that we have listed on our parent guide, so check that one out as well. But Miss Lauren, I have a joke for you today. Yes, Miss Greta? How can you tell if there is a dinosaur in your refrigerator? Hmm, I don't know. How? The door won't close. But thanks everybody for joining me today, and I will see you all tomorrow morning at 10.30 for another edition of Boredom Busters. Have a nice day!